Hey, people, if you're looking for a really nice face cam, this is an absolute banger. This is Elgato's face cam, 1080p, 60 frames a second. I use it for all my streams every single day. We've got a nice, beautiful block design. We've got a USB-C connection at the back. Just plug it in straight into the back, into your USB port. Super, super easy. Lots of options on the back to mount it onto the top of your screen. You can also detach it underneath as well for different mounting options. And just the overall look of it and the quality is very, very high. Now, it also comes with some really cool software. What you can do, right, you can do loads of different things. You can zoom it in here, just me zooming it in. Now, if you want to change temperature of the room, you can make it go cool. You can make it go hot, apart from me on the screen, of course. And you can also do other stuff like flipping the screen around. Lots of stuff, contrast, saturation, sharpness metering, compensation, so many of the options there and very, very easy to use. Now, if you do want to check this out and of course, all their other stuff, I'll leave a link in the description below. Let me know if you get some of this stuff in the comment section. Okay, people, let's get into the battles. What's up, YouTube? For today's video, we have a full copycat Pokemon team. This is a really cool team because I'm at complete mercy of the opponent using the last move used in a Pokemon battle. It is going to be a wild bunch of theme teams today. Let's get into it. This is a battle against Ken Yaniel. This is on the, uh, almost said the Wycom then. The, uh, the Union Room, I like to call it the Onion Room back in the day. So we got a Heatran lead here, and I've got my Minum lead. Now, these sets are fairly easy because I only ran Copycat and Protect on them. The reason I ran Copycat and Protect at the same time was for allowing me to actually see the move of the opponents and then go for the copycat. Copycat is a really cool move too, and it actually was very, very fun. The hardest bit about it was I was completely reliant on the opponent. So we got the heat rain going for our Earth Power here. The EV spread on my Minum, <laughs> which is a pretty funny story about this, uh, was max special attack and max speed and modest nature. So I'm gonna go for Earth Power on the heat rain there. I actually copycatted its Earth Power. Unfortunately, it's got a Shukuberry, so it's able to live that a lot better than I would have hoped. The Funny thing is, I also had a Shukaberry put on this set too for any ground type moves coming my way, and I actually managed to live that really, really well. It's, we almost took exactly the same amount of damage. Now, I've got max speed here, so that allows me to use Copycat again, outspeeding the Heatran, and Heatran is most definitely going to go down to this one. Give me a nice little early lead here. So that's very, very good, and I, I was laughing because I'm like, that's so funny we both had Shukaberry, right? Now, the next Pokemon I come out here was Blaze again. I can tell you what, I wasn't laughing. This is very, very scary. Now, the bad thing, once again, about Copycat, if this decides to use any status moves or anything like that, um, I can't do any damage at all. So Blaziken is going to go for a uh, Protector, and of course, it's going to be the Speed Boost Blaziken. The, you know, the sweat is on, people. So now it's going to go for a Sword Dance. So Minum is going to be copying the last move used in battle being Sword Dance. So I'm not going to have any copying moves that actually attack at all. So there's no point in me swapping out here, because all I'll do is just copy the last move, probably being Sword Dance, right? So uh, Minum's going to go for Sword Dance here. Accurate Exposed. And uh, now I've got that boost in attack. It's, it's going to change everything here, people. Uh, now Blaziken is going to get another speed boost here. Blaziken outspeeds my entire team uh, in st uh, speed stats now, obviously. Uh, so now Blaziken's going to go for a second Sword Dance here, boosting its attack by another two stages. So... This thing is primed and ready to sweep my team. Go for Copycat again there. Go for another Sword Dance here. Like, this is this is content, people. So, uh, two Sword Dances on mine. I, I wish I could use the physical move, but as soon as I get hit by a physical move, Blaziken is going to dominate me. It's about to take me out with an Ember. So, Blaziken's going to go for another uh, Sword Dance here. Now, it's got absolute max in uh, attack. And it's also got like plus three or four in speed. So no way Minum is going to be outspeeding that. I got a question. Question of the day, people. How many somersaults do I do in both of these battles? You got to count them all, right? Every single Pokemon that does a somersault in the air. Can someone be the champion and, uh, you know, see the somersault numbers? So we got the Blazing go for a close combat here. And that is the end of my mind. Obviously a plus six in attack. Now, I've got a Chansey here to bring in one Pokemon, and there's only one Pokemon on my team that can actually do something in this situation. So, Blazing also has Life Orb on top of six, uh, plus six and Sword there. It doesn't have much attack at all, right? So, bring in my Ryolu here. Now, this might bring back some fond memories of the Ryolu uh, copycat Horn Drill sweep I did. 
So I know that it used close combat, and I can go for a copycat right here. Now I've got the ability Prankster. So Prankster gives a plus one priority to status moves, and that includes copycat. So what I can do is I can outspeed the blaze again, hit it hard and fast with the close combat, and take it out. That was brilliant. So if I didn't have uh, Riley on my team, that was it. I didn't have any other Pokemon that you know would have lived any uh, you know moves from Blaze again like that. So um, I'm out of the I'm out of the woods for for now. And now comes a disgusting shiny dragon. Also, people, if you're hyped for the theme team for returning for 2022, drop a like on the video right there. So we got uh, Dragonite here. It's going to be able to resist all the moves uh, like close combat. But I thought I could go for Protect. It might go for another move that doesn't resist. But I thought, nah, let's just go for Copycat and get the close combat off. At least I could break its multi-scale. That would be nice. Now, the item I've got on Raiolo is Focus Sash as well. So I know that I can leave one attack. So close combat does nothing like I thought. Oh, the EV spread. It was max attack and max special attack. Brave nature. The reason I didn't run any speed because I was purely relying on Prankster. So Dragonite's going to go for a Dragon Claw there. Um, that would have been great if I went for Protect and then for Copycat again. But I had no idea what Dragonite would do. He could have gone for a Dragon Ant for all I know. Uh, so now I'm going to go for a Copycat again. I'm going to Copycat the Dragon Claw. I wasn't sure whether this would take Dragonite out. And it didn't. It's too thick. And now it's going to take me out with another Dragon. Claw, but Riley did a top solid job there, taking out Blaziken and, you know, giving a good amount of damage to Dragonite. So it's used Dragon Claw as its last move. So I thought, well, what's it going to do against a Zoomer of huge power run? Right? So once again, I've got Copycat and Protect on this set, and I'm going to be going for a Copycat here. I outspeed the Dragonite, do a little somersault. Why did I just notice something really cool too? When it does, I'm not sure when it does uh, only this move, but its tail actually glows when it does a somersault, and it's going to use Dragon Claw and take the Dragonite out. So it's very, very nice. Now, the next Pokemon to come in is going to be Staraptor. There's no way I'm going to be outspeeding Staraptor at all. Now, the EV spread I've got in Azumarill is as follows. I've also got huge power. Uh, I've got max attack and max health. So it's a pretty thick uh, Azumarill and the item is citrus free. So go for a deck. I want to see what Staraptor is going to do and it's going to go for a double edge. So obviously, it's a reckless set. I guess that anyway when I didn't see uh, Intimidate. Um, this Pokemon is extremely scary with Double Edge and Brave Bird. So it's going to be popping a Brave Bird here. Now, Brave Bird does an enormous amount of damage to Azumarill. The only reason I lived that because I was running, uh, you know, max health right there. And now Azumarill is going to be eating its Citrus Bird. It's very, very nice. It's very juicy and citrusy. And now I can go for a Copycat ride. And what's going to happen here is Azumarill is going to go for a Brave Bird. Uh, only on Pip Knight, Shanley, Hacker Exposed. So go for the Brave Bird. It's dropped Star Raptor. It's dropped it in one shot. Huge power Brave Bird. Man, that was savage. So taking a little bit of recall there. Things are going absolutely fine at the moment. And uh, out comes Gardevoir. So Gardevoir, if I can land another Brave Bird on that, that'll be wild. But I don't think I'll be able to outspeed it. And uh, now Gardevoir is going to send my Azumarill right to the moon. So that's it for Azumarill. But what an effort there from Azumarill taking out the Star Raptor and the Dragonite too. So I can see that Gardevoir's got Life Orb as his item too. And I thought, let's go into Delcaddy. Now, Delcaddy is max speed and max attack. Choppleberry as the item normalizes the abilities. I thought, normalize would be really cool with Copycat. What normalize does, right, it turns the move into a normal type. So that will grant Delcaddy stab. So that's actually a stab Moonblast right there. Uh, only on Pinot Shell. So go for the Moonblast. I've got max attack. So obviously I didn't have much in special attack. But it still did some really good damage. Just because of the stab and the base. Base power of Moonblast, I guess. So uh, Gardevoir's going to go for a Charge Beam. It misses. And this time, I was like, oh, wow. I can get a Charge Beam boost from a normal a normal Charge Beam. And uh, it didn't happen. But it was really cool using a normal Charge Beam. Now Gardevoir's going to go for its own Charge Beam. This time, it lands. And it does a lot of damage. The next... Next move is definitely taking out my Delcaddy. So Delcaddy's going to have to go for a Charge Beam here because that was the last move used on the field. So doing another little uh, somersault there and Charge Beam misses. Oh, no. And now the Gardevoir is going to go for a Moon Blast and Delcaddy is going to join uh, Azumarill on the moon. There's a, lot, there's, there's a lot of Pokemon on the moon over the years of me playing Pokemon. So now Gardevoir is going to take a little bit of damage here. I thought, this is content, right? I'm going to swap in my Scumbreon, right? Um, and what I can do is I can actually... Hopefully live a moon blast because there's no way Gardevoir's not going for a moon blast. And hopefully I can take it out with no special attack EVs hindering. I think it's like 
it's definitely hindering and special attack. So I lift the Moonblast on 15 health. It was dicey. It was close. Now Umbreon's going to go for a, uh, a Somersault here, and hopefully it can take the uh, Gardevoir out with a Moonblast. So Moonblast Umbreon, it seems kind of fitting that it's got it right, and that is actually the end of Gardevoir. That was beautiful. So it just hung on there. The EV spread was... Max health and max defense. Very, very bulky. Um, I did have a rising special defense nature too. So last Pokemon here we got is the Dialga. I was like, man, this is going to be rough. I'm going to get out sped here, right? So Dialga's going to go for an Aura Serum. I'm like, wait, that's actually good because remember, it copies the last move used on the field. So that means my next Pokemon can use Aura Sphere as well. And that's going to be Jinx, right? So Jinx is max speed and max special attack, right? We got Life Orb on this thing. So like, well, it's probably going to go for some sort of powerful move. It's got Roar of Time. It's like, oh, okay, uh, I'm probably going to go down to that, right? I'm not running any bulk on this Jinx at all. I've got Copycat to use, and I can definitely get a Aura Sphere right away. Will it take Dialga out? No way. I don't even know if it'll take Dialga out with a crit. So doing a Somersault, it looks really weird that Jinx does a Somersault, and a Aura Sphere is going to fire. Right, I think it came out of Jinx's mouth. He did solid damage, but man, Dialga was sick. It was super, super thick. So this is definitely running some sort of bolt. Here comes Roar of Time on my uh, Jinx, right? And Jinx lives on 69 health there. And we got the uh, leftovers on Dialga as well. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, Dialga is on recharge. I have to go for Copycat. And Jinx can actually go for Roar of Time. Roar of Time, Jinx, people. Only on Pinrite Shell. So go for the Copycat here. Doing a nice little somersault. Uh, Dialga's on recharge, right? And Roar of Time is going to land, which is beautiful. And it was actually enough to take out the Dialga. And that, my friends, is the big fat dub there. However, I actually faint to the Life Orb damage at the same time. So the battle ended in a draw, right? But after my Jinx fainted, right, we had a nice big fat juicy baby bottle... Uh, uh, absolute rage quit at the end there, having their Dialga dropped by Roar of Time, people. Hope you enjoyed the first battle. There was some mega, mega salt right there. I actually won that battle because the Dialga fainted first. So I guess that's why they rage quit it at the end. Let's get on to battle number two here. This is the battle against Joker King. And we've got a uh, Torterra lead. Now, this is a six versus three battle. So Torterra, I was actually worried about a ground type move. Now, there's a funny story about this miner, right? I'll tell it to you right now. When I was EV training this team, um, this is the battle I had, be I think I had it before the other uh, battle, and I accidentally put uh, defensive EVs on Minum instead of special attacking EV. So I was kind of curious why my moves were doing like no damage at all on the special side in some other battles. Anyway, just keep that in your head. So it's going to go for a wood hammer. Minum lives on one health just due to the 100 defense EVs that I gave it. It's <laughs> so funny. So doing another little somersault, right? And now Minum's going to go for a wood hammer. Only on your people I shout. And you look at the damage that did. So I'm going to take myself out with a recall. Now, this was quite a funny comparison here. So, Mime's going to fade, and I thought, well, if I swap in Del Caddy, Del Caddy can come in and use a normalized wood hammer. And as you know, wood hammer's got a fair, uh, you know, thumping base power, right? So here it comes. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, this pussy's gonna go for a big wood, and Torterra doesn't actually fight. I can't believe it. It doesn't faint. And watch this, right? It goes for a wood hammer on me, and Del Caddy. Okay, so Mime lives, but Del Caddy faints. Like. I was, I was clueless for about 10, 10 minutes after that. I was thinking, what's going on? And then I went back after the belt and looked at the EVs, and the Minum had 100 defense EVs there instead of special attack. So there you go. That's the story about Minum. Now, the next Pokemon here is Palkia. Uh, this is also one more Pokemon left. So I thought I'd bring in my uh, Azumarill here. Now, Azumarill is actually quite a good Pokemon for Palkia because it doesn't have a lot of moves to hit it with. So it's going to go for Ice Beam. Ice Beam's going to do nothing. Now, that's pretty clever because also Copycat Ice Beam's not going to do anything to Palkia at all. It's going to be, you know, not very effective. And I don't have any special attack EVs at all. So, you know, Ice Beam's going to do even less. So this bit, I had to speed up a lot here. So we both spammed Ice Beam. For like, this went on for a lot of turns here. We'll really try to get a free sax here. Now, I had my scissors berry, which gave me a little bit of health back here, and I just kept using somersault and somersault and somersault, and I finally got a free sax, right? It was amazing. So then what I did, right, I spammed Copycat over and over again, hoping that Palkia would just be frozen, let it go for like the rest of this match, right? Like, look how many ice beams I'm using. I'm just, I'm just jumping, I'm spamming, and I'm jumping, and I'm spamming. Like, this went on for like five or ten minutes. Unfortunately for me, uh, Palkia thaws out 
out, crits me, and then freezes me. You can't make this shit up. So anyway, Azuru is frozen, and I've only got a couple of turns. I really was hoping I could actually uh, thaw out here. Unfortunately, Palkia is going to take me out with a disrespect or a sphere. And that's it for the Azumaru. I can't believe I lost that matchup. So now I've got three more Pokemon. It's like, wait, wait a second. It's time for Jinx. Like, Jinx was absolute MVP. Now, we know that... Uh, Palkia has got uh, Aura Sphere and it's got Ice Beam. So I went for a copycat here, which I used the uh, Aura Sphere here. So that's the last move being used. So that's going to do some okay damage to the Palkia and it doesn't take it out, which is very, very unfortunate. I was like, man, that really sucks. Palkia uses Spatial Rent. I'm like, wait, wait, I've been hit by Roar of Time, been hit by Spatial Rent and it lived on 17 health, right? And now, because Jinx has got copycat, Jinx can potentially keep using Spatial Rain over and over and over again. And it landed too. And that's the end of Palkia. This is this is content, people. Jinx has used Roar of Time and it's used Spatial Rain. Like, this Jinx is illegal. Now, the last Pokemon here, I lived on three health, by the way, is going to be Giratina. Now, if I land this attack, I might be a Giratina winner. So, Giratina, that's shiny. looks fire, by the way. Who likes uh, shiny Giratina? looks beautiful. So, this thing's very thick, right? So, I went for the Copycat. I outsped the Giratina. And I was hoping... Hoping this would do mega damage and it missed. You wouldn't believe it. Unfortunately, Giratina is going to finish me off with a disrespect to Aura Sphere. Now, that was actually a good play because if you think about it, Aura Sphere was the very last move used. So if I use Copycat now and it keeps using Aura Sphere, I won't be able to land it because it's a ghost type, effectively shutting my team down complete if you think about it. Now, I was thinking to myself here, what can I do to Giratina? Because Giratina was their very last Pokemon when they bought three along. And I've still got one more Pokemon left in the back too, which was my Rylou. But the same thing's going to happen there. All they need to do is use Aura Sphere. Then I was thinking, well, maybe if I try and stall them out with my Umbreon, um, I started using Protect after the third one, I believe. Because I thought the battle was over. I was like, there's not much I can do. So I was like, you know what? Let's see if I can stall like Giratina's Aura Sphere. Let's see what other moves it's got. Because it must have a Ghost type move or a Dragon type move. And if it is forced to use one of those two moves, I might be able to get some decent damage on. Not with Umbreon, but maybe with Rayolu, right? So this went for a long time. Once again, I had to speed this part up. Like the Ice Beam Somersault spamming session earlier on. I had to do it, right? Because it, it went for ages. Like, I think this, this raw battle... I uh, was like, it went like almost to the time, right? So uh, Giratina is going to keep spamming Aura Sphere. I was using up a lot. I think it was almost at this stage down to single digits. Very, very close. And I just kept using uh, Protect over and over again. Like the Blissey Kid got four Protects in a row. At least I can get us two, right? Also, a lot of people ask what the uh, uh, the video, the Blissey Kid in. It is in the G-Max Butterfree Sweep, if you were curious. So I lived on the uh, 69 health there once again. And this time, it actually went for a Shadow Force. It had run out of Aura Sphere PP. So now the Shadow Force is going to make Giratina disappear. Then I wait. I can actually hit this with Shadow Force. Now, Shadow Force is a two-turn move. Which makes it interesting, yeah, as you'll get to see. So uh, Shadow Force is going to land against my Umbreon. Umbreon lived on 4 health because it resisted, and I was running max defense. And uh, I went for a copycat here, right? Zabrion's going to disappear with the uh, the Shadow Force. Shadow Force Umbreon, only on Peter Shadow, right? And now Giratina, right, is going to need to go for a Shadow Force itself. So it disappeared as well. So it disappeared, and then I disappeared. But in the meantime, right, I was getting leftovers recovery, so I might be able to live another one. Unfortunately, I couldn't connect a move against uh, the Giratina at this point in time. So I was hoping I could leave maybe one more here. It's going to be very, very close. Here it comes, another Shadow Force, and I lived a one health. That's two one health uh, lives, uh, uh, like, I think in this battle that merges the battle, right? So go for another Somersault here. How many Somersaults have I done? And now we're going to go for another Shadow Force here. So disappearing again, and I've got 13 health back. So I probably need to get another round of left. I think that I can potentially live one more. Maybe. I just don't know what other attacking moves the Giratina had at this point in the game. So I'm missing the Giratina, of course, and now the Umbreon's going to have 25 health again. So I think it had 25 health before, so there is a possibility that it could lift this attack. So here it comes. Unfortunately, it is going to take my Umbreon out this time, and all that's left is my Prankster Rylou versus Giratina. Now, Prankster's actually pretty interesting, right? Prankster on a two-turn move actually isn't all that bad if you're not running uh, speed EV. So what happens, right? I went first to the Shadow Force. Now, since it didn't connect, that means the Giratina will go first the next turn. So that means Giratina trying to troll me with the Shadow Force, right, will go first and then I'll go second due to it being 
a, uh, a like no uh, speed EVs and Brave Nation. That actually allowed me, I, I thrusted it by the way, allowed me, <laughs> why does it thrust? It allowed me to go second on the damaging move, which really, really worked out well for me. So say I went like max speed, that would have been bad if I outsped the Giratina, of course. Now Giratina's other move is Pain Split, so I don't want to use Pain Split, because if that's the last move like being used, it'd be really, really bad. So I thrust it again. So one more thrust, one more Shadow Force, and one more thrust should be enough to take out uh, the Giratina. So disappearing is still there, only on Pit Rush Shadow, right? And uh, now Giratina is going to need to disappear as well, and it's going to try and use Pain Split to try and get me to use the last move being used here. And now it's going to disappear. Then I'm gonna go here. We can't. It was like it was like playing musical chairs with Shadow Force over and over again. So now Rylo is gonna disappear again. Like there's no Pokemon on the field. Like this field has been empty. Like there's no Pokemon here. Like it's like John Cena's on the field. So anyway, we've got three minutes left of the battle here. Uh, Giratina is gonna go for a pace for here, and I'm gonna go for a Shadow Force. And that was the final Shadow Force to take out the Giratina. And I was a Giratina winner. Thank you for the battle, Joe. I hope you enjoyed both of these battles with the copycat team. It was crazy. And I'll catch you tomorrow for another upload. Peace out, people.